Always a time. Welcome, Mudslingers, to the first video of your Level 1 Ceramics class. We're going to work with uh, cylinders today, so we're going to start with the basics. So we're going to learn how to wedge today. Uh, wedging is a process that needs air out of clay so that you don't have air bubbles and also it makes the clay homogeneous, makes it consistent. So let's get started. So I've got my snack pack of clay. I'm going to pull a chunk out. And I'm going to weigh about a pound and a half on the scales. It's really important that you weigh out the clay when you're learning how to do cylinders so that the weight is consistent each time you throw. So here's about a pound and a half on the scale. I'm going to wedge or knead a pound and a half of clay. <coughs> so the technique I'm going to show you is called monkey faced wedging and uh, hopefully the video uh, you'll be able to see my hands but here's, a, here's how it works. Uh, I'm going to put both my hands on either side of the chunk of clay. I'm going to push forward into the table and the palms of my hand are going to push in and actually press into what would be the monkey's eyes. Let me do a few strokes here so you can see what it looks like. And I'll give you a couple different directions. And after a few strokes you can see why we call it the monkey face waiting. Here's the monkey. Smoking monkey here. There you go. And a couple key tips. <clears throat> One is that the palms of your hands meet and push into the, the monkey's eye sockets. That forms uh, the part of the face. And you'll notice here at his lips, uh, you're getting an overlap going. So that's what's uh, creating the mixing process. Let me show you from the side here. So here's what it looks like. Palms into the monkey's face. My hands, are, my fingers are still on the back of the monkey's head. I'm going to lift the monkey face up. <clears throat> He's going to balance on his lips right here. See that? The back of his head is now perpendicular to the table. I have my, palm, my palms on his ears. I'm going to push forward, and as I push forward, my palms meet. I lift him back up again, balances on the lip, head perpendicular to the table. I repeat the stroke. So I keep my fingers on the back of his head, push forward, lift up, push forward. Each time I press forward, my palms are pressing into his eye sockets, like that. <clears throat> so after about uh, 20 strokes, 15 strokes, uh, flip the monkey over on his side, like this, because we want to uh, blend it a little further. Sometimes when you do this technique, you get a, a soft spot in the center, so we, like a jelly roll. So we want to turn him over on his side and give him a few more strokes. Now, uh, let me show you again a couple of key points about the monkey face wedging technique. Uh, one is that you're not really using a lot of strength here. You're not pushing hard into the monkey's face because if you do that, you get baboon. You don't want baboon. Uh, so keep the stroke short. It should be just a little bit of a push, sort of smearing that monkey into the table. See, it's a slight forward motion, not so not a heavy down motion. The other thing is if you put a dot on top of the monkey's head, you see, should see that dot drop into his nose <clears throat> and then disappear into his lips. So here's a little dot. I lift, I push once, there it is on his nose. Do it again, and now it disappears into his lips. So there's an overlapping process going on. The other thing is um, be sure to keep your hands on the ears of the monkey, because if you don't, you just get palm prints and you get a different animal. Watch what happens. Nope. I'm using my palms, but I'm not pushing in on the monkey's ears. In this case, you get hammerhead shark or ET flown home. So keep, if you start it, if it starts widening out like a hot dog, it means you need to put more pressure on the sides as you push in. So palms on the side, push in to meet in the middle. Lift up, push in. Lift up, push in. Lift up. Push in. Okay. Once you've done about 15 strokes one way, 10 or 15 strokes the other, uh, the uh, the clay's blended pretty well, and you can then pat it into a ball like this, and it'll be ready for throwing. So next step, let's go to the wheel.
Part of the road? Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. We're here at the wheel, and Cassie's behind the uh, camera now, so I don't have to do all that myself. Um, I want to show you the parts of the wheel, and I want to show you the tools that you're going to need for throwing cylinders. We've got a couple of different kinds of wheels here. We have the white wheels, uh, which are called Pacifica wheels. We have another one called the Shimpa wheel, and this greenish one is called the Brent wheel. Uh, they, <clears throat> they have a few differences that I want to point out. Uh, one of the first differences is the uh, part called the splash pan. Uh, and on this particular wheel, the Pacifica, there's a trick to getting it to go on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take it off. <laughs> That's the trick. Okay, so for the Pacifica wheel, you notice on the splash pan, you've got a narrow connecting point and a wide connecting point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the narrow one on first. Oh, there's the problem. Okay, here, I fixed it. <laughs> put the narrow one on, on at 12 o'clock. Put the narrow one at 12 o'clock, then take the wide one, bring it up, drop it over the little one, the narrow one, and push it forward. Now it's centered. Uh, so that's the, the secret ingredient to getting this splash pen on. Uh, so let me take this splash pen off. Here's how you take it off. Just push it forward again, lift the, the big one off, the big one off. So the splash pen off. So, the Brent wheel is a little simpler. It's got two parts, uh, a large section and a small section. You put the large section on first, and then you see there's a, uh, a little clip and a button, and those simply pop together uh, on the Brent wheel. Those are pretty easy to get together. So, like that, simple. All right, so parts of the wheel you'll need to know about. This is called the wheel head. This is where all the business, the business end of the, uh, the tool is. Uh, on the wheel head are two screws that are called bat pins. And onto the bat pins will go a bat. And these blue bats uh, are designed to fit right on the pins like that. So you'll be throwing on top of the bat. So make sure you have a, a good <coughs> straight bat before you start. We've already talked about the splash pan. Now let's take a look at the on off switch. On the Pacifica wheel, there's, uh, and you won't be able to see this too easily from the camera, but don't worry. Uh, there's a big orange button here. I'm going to push that button in. It'll start to glow. Uh, that means it's on. The, the white wheels have a reversing function, which means either right-handed or left-handed throwers can use this. Uh, if you're right-handed, like most of the world, uh, we're going to be putting this on a reverse direction. So it's actually going to be uh, moving counterclockwise. That's, that's the other way. So counterclockwise. So it's moving this way. So if you're right-handed, you want to work on, on this side of the wheel with the clay moving away from you. If you're left-handed, uh, you'll make it run clockwise, and you would just flip the switch to make it go clockwise. So everything would be opposite for lefties. Okay, so let's put the splash pan back on. Oops. This way, and there we go. Narrow one first. Why push it to center it? <clears throat> the pedal here, if you can see, is a little bit like a <clears throat> gas pedal on your car, with the exception that when you set the speed and take your foot off, it stays in that at that speed. Uh, so you don't have to have your foot on the pedal the whole time like you would on a car. In fact, you may see, I don't know if you can get this, Cassie, mm -hmm. you may see the brick here. This is a handy thing to have near your wheel so you can set your foot off on the brick uh, instead of keeping it on the pedal the whole time. And uh, that's useful for folks that have shorter legs, too. Gives you, give you a lap here to put your, your uh, arms off. Tools. Okay, so basic toolkit. Uh, we've got a yellow sponge, throwing sponge. Wooden rib. This is a tool used for shaping. An extension of your fingers. Something called the sharpened stick. A needle tool. And I'm missing my wire tool. I think I left it over on the wedging table. Uh, we'll, we'll get that in a second. Uh, also, I've got a, uh, about a one-gallon bucket that's filled almost to the top with water. It's a good idea to make sure the water is really high so that you don't have to reach in to get water. So make it easy just to drop your, to touch your hand onto the surface of the water. In addition, we've got a grungy towel that will be your protection from all the goo. And let's mention also briefly the stool. Uh, the stool should be roughly level with the wheel head. 
uh, when you're throwing. Because if you're using well, one of these, don't spin it way up. You don't want to be sitting up higher than the wheel head because you want your hips roughly at the level of the wheel head. You want to get right up close to the wheel, sort of like you're saddling up on a horse here. Don't sit, don't sit back here and try to throw. You need, you need the leverage that you're going to gain by having your, your lap here with your hands, your body practically centered over top of that clay. 